Welcome to Faithful Friends. My name is Racer. Racer, it's time. Let's go. For many of us, one of our greatest pleasures is the daily joy we get from our faithful friends. It's our responsibility to care for them and better educate ourselves to ensure their lifelong happiness. For 25 years, Doctors Foster and Smith have shared their professional advice to help us return our pets' loyalty and unconditional love. Faithful Friends is about maintaining that special relationship. And you're my faithful friend. I'm getting a new pet. When should I take him to the vet for his first checkup? When a new pet comes into your home, one of the very first things you should do for its care and well-being is schedule a visit to your veterinarian and get their first complete checkup. Hi, I'm Wanda Goldberg and welcome to Doctors Foster and Smith's Faithful Friends. Doctors Foster and Smith have become our nation's foremost authority on pet care and education. Faithful Friends is the definitive television series offering demonstrations, tips, products, veterinary and expert advice to the pet parent that ensures the well-being of your faithful friends. There are a lot of challenges and responsibilities that come with pet parenting and bringing a new pet into your home. In this week's show, we'll learn about many of the things you can do to make a new pet's arrival a happy and positive experience for both you and your new faithful friend. The doctors have invited a very special guest to join us today. We'll be right back. <laughs> but first, let's go to Mrs. Shade's class. Let's go. You walk your dog on a wet, miserable day, and what's the first thing he does when he comes in the door? That's right, he shakes off all that water and mud in your lovely home. Now, you can't stop your dog from shaking the moisture off his fur, but you can get him to do it before he walks in the door. The technique is simple. All you have to do is tell your dog what he's doing as he does it. Now, LD is my volunteer for today, and he's going to get a little bath for a moment. So we're about to have wet dog. And when he comes out, I'm going to tell him what he's doing as he does it. This is where you shake, friend. This is where you shake your little body like that. Shake, 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 shake. That was perfect. Now, it's going to take about 30 repetitions before LD makes the connection between what I'm saying, shake, 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 and what he's doing. Now, it's a really easy trick. You just have to catch your dog when he's wet. And when you've perfected it, you'll be able to get your dog to leave the mess outside before you come in. Good work, yeah. Coming up next, the pet keeper, Mark Marone. I want to see. And interesting wow. demonstrations. Now, I like that. <laughs> we'll be right back with Faithful Friends. Honey, did you order more pet supplies from Doctors Foster and Smith? Maxwell, is that you? Oh, you're a Doctors Foster and Smith pet supply. More doggy treats, Maxwell. Smart choice. If pets could order, they'd go to Doctors Foster and Smith, real veterinarians who bring quality pet supplies at low prices right to your door. Shop online at fosterandsmith.com or request a catalog by calling 1 800 442 pets. Welcome back. Hey, gang. <laughs> Follow me. Uh -oh, for me. Welcome back to Faithful Friends. Our guest today is Victoria Shade. Welcome, Victoria. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for being here. It's my pleasure. Victoria is a certified pet dog trainer. She was awarded Best DVD 2006 for her DVD, New Puppy, Now What?, which teaches you everything you need to know about living with your new puppy. As always, we're going to ask her some of your most frequently asked questions. Ready? I think I am. Okay. What about getting a puppy from an animal shelter? Oh, I think it's such a wonderful idea. There are so many wonderful pets that need homes. And going to a shelter is a great way to bring a new dog into your home instead of necessarily going to a breeder. So I fully support shelter adoptions. How do I choose the right puppy for me? Do your research. Don't just say, I want a puppy. I'm going to go get one. Make sure you know about the breed, that you know something about the exercise requirements, the grooming requirements. And then if you have a family, make sure you talk to your family and make sure they're all on the same page. What is the correct age to spay a pet? Traditionally, it's six months, but mm -hmm. there are a lot of shelter organizations and rescue groups that are spaying and neutering early with no ill effects. So it just depends on where you get your puppy. 
And we just can never stress enough how important spaying and neutering pets are. So incredibly important, yeah. yes. Now, when should you start obedience training your pet? I will start with a puppy as young as nine weeks old. Now, people used to say traditionally that you couldn't train a puppy until they were six months old, but after six months have passed, you could have a lot of really bad behaviors to undo. So if you start off on the right paw right away, you'll have a great relationship with your puppy. On the right paw. I like that. Thanks. Now, what about biting? How do you stop a puppy from biting? Well, it's important for puppies to do a certain amount of nipping just so they can realize how strong their jaws are. So the, the gentle kind of mouthing, that absent-minded mouthing they do, which I think is adorable, that's okay. When they start biting down too hard, you have to let them know that's too much. And the technique is just to kind of yelp, ouch! And you have to be a good actor <laughs> to mark it. You can't just go, ouch. You know, really shriek it and then get up and walk away. So like shocking. Yes. So you want to startle right. them. Okay. Right, you're marking that behavior, and then getting up and leaving is social isolation, which is the most powerful punisher you can give a puppy, because puppies always want to be close to you, and by getting up and walking away, you're saying, I don't like puppies that bite too hard. Mm -hmm. Now, what tips do you have for kittens scratching furniture? Kittens are going to scratch. You just have to make sure you direct it to the right outlet. So if you notice your kitten starting to maybe scratch the edge of the chair, mm -hmm. point him to a, a scratching post. What are the challenges, or are there any, with adopting an older pet? Oh, I love people that do older dog adoptions. I just worked with someone who has a 10-year-old dog. It's a new dog to her, a husky, and just a wonderful relationship. So in older dogs, I guess if there were a problem, it would be that if there are bad habits, they might be slightly more entrenched. But I don't want to turn anyone off to older dog adoption because it's wonderful. And what did you say before? You can teach a do an old dog oh, new tricks. Yes, you can teach an old dog new exactly. tricks. Exactly. So it just may take a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. A little yeah. bit. Now, how do I successfully bring a new pet into my home? Make sure everyone is on the same page. You don't want to go out on a whim and just bring home a dog because it really changes your life. Mm -hmm. So we want the whole family to understand what their responsibilities are going to be. They all agree to them and you make an informed decision for the whole family. Yeah, that's true, because surprises are a wonderful thing, but maybe not a pet surprise. Not necessarily, no. Yeah, good idea. Well, thank you so much, Victoria. It was a pleasure, thank it was, you. It was great. Thank you. While Victoria and I prepare a demonstration, take a look at this week's road trip. We love taking you out on the road to see interesting places and to meet the committed people whose lives and expertise are dedicated to the well-being of our faithful friends. Welcome to Dr. Foster's and Smith's Faithful Friends. I'm Mark Marone, the Pet Keeper, and these are my faithful friends. Now, if you followed your dog around all day, and every time it did something you didn't want it to do, you stopped the behavior, eventually he would stop doing that particular behavior. Whatever behavior he was doing, because you stopped it, the animal never gets the opportunity to do it, so it no longer thinks that that behavior is an option. But the problem is that we correct our animal's behaviors randomly, and we correct them inconsistently. This is called the slot machine factor. When you go to Atlantic City or Las Vegas and you stand in front of a slot machine, you are putting the money in and pulling the handle. You don't always get a reward every time you pull it. Sometimes you'll get a reward. Sometimes you might get a reward. But the fact that you might get that reward makes you try all the harder. And the same thing applies with animals. If an animal jumps on you, and nine times out of 10, you stop the animal from jumping on you, and the 10th time you say, oh, okay, you can jump on me, and you pet the animal. The animal knows, gee, I tried nine times and I couldn't do it, but the 10th time I was able to do it. Therefore, I have to try nine times, and the 10th time I'll be able to do it. So animals are as much of a gambler as humans are. One of the two things that we have in common. We don't have spite, but animals like to gamble too. If it works for the animal, and the animal has to try hard, he's gonna keep trying until he gets that desired effect. If the animal never gets the opportunity to do a behavior that you don't want, they won't think that it's an option anymore. I've been bitten by a lot of dogs wagging their tails. That's not only it, it's the position of the animal's eyes, the position of its ears, and your experiences with the animals. If you're unsure about an animal, proceed with caution. You, no one has to assume that all animals are as friendly as my animals are here. And this is what causes problems with a society, is a lot of people don't even know what their animals are like. Everyone looks at their animals with a blind eye, oh my dog would never bite anybody. And those are the people who let their animals run loose, and it's irresponsible pet owners like that that cause problems for a lot of breeds of dogs. I'm Mark Marone, the Pet Keeper, and these are my faithful friends.